so for those who aren't familiar with where we are, we're in Mexico City, right? Yeah. Now. This, this is sprawling wilderness is in the middle of one of the most densely populated cities in the, in in the Earth, world. If not the most densely yeah, populated yeah, yeah. city. It's incredible. Xochimilco is a neighborhood in the southeast part of Mexico City. Here, you'll also find calm canals and lush farmland. This surprising oasis gives you a glimpse into the past and the future of agriculture. This morning, we're going to learn about this magical place and get a taste of what's growing in a farm-to-table breakfast. Then, I'll show you how to make it at home. I managed to convince Andrew to wake up this morning at four o'clock. I told him I had a surprise. I wanted to show him something really spectacular. And what do you think? This is the first time I've been up before sunrise, maybe in my life. Worth it? And <laughs> so worth it, oh my God. It's beautiful. The name Xochimilco comes from two Nahuatl words that mean where the flowers grow. You may have seen these canals filled with brightly colored boats called trajineras, but long before that, there were chinampas, the farms that allowed the ancient city of Tenochtitlan to thrive. The city was built on an island in Lake Texcoco, it was the capital of the expanding Aztec empire, now known as Mexico City. To support its growing population of over 200,000 inhabitants, they began to create floating farmland using woven mats supported by posts driven in the lake bed and layered with soil and mud. We're going to meet my friends Anais and Joy at the Chinampa del Sol to see the more than 50 varieties of plants they're growing and to make breakfast from what's in season. Arca Tierra has been working with the Chinampera community for over 12 years. Their mission is to support the farmers and improve the ecosystem that has been threatened by factors like land abandonment and pollution, while at the same time preserving the history and methods of this ancient Mesoamerican agriculture. So how long has this been a farm? How long have people been growing food in this spot? This is one of the very first the indications of farming here in, mm -hmm. in the whole area. Okay. So the chinampas are actually the best example of how humans can be a positive intervention to create life. Yeah. We're now used to hear that we're the worst thing that could happen yeah. to the world. <laughs> I promise you not, you will see how positive we can be. Oh, these herbs are so beautiful. Can I, can yeah, I eat? Yeah, of course. The okay. smell is amazing, right? Yeah, yeah. And if you oh. see this area, mm -hmm. like from the top, this is the sun. Remember how I told you that mm. this is a chinampa del sol? Okay. You, wow. It's like the shape of the sun. It this comes from a Chinese proverb about harvesting the sun because oh. we follow all the natural processes and we don't add any chemicals to the earth. The soil in Xochimilco is referred to as black gold. The unique man-made mix of lake sediment, plants, and roots of trees is the key to the abundance of life here. This is the beginning of everything at the Chinampa. This is the mud with all the nutrients. So what they will do, and this is an artisanal process totally, mm -hmm. is that they're gonna cut in these little squares uh -huh. and make the little pokes on the squares with your fingertips. Like ah. this. you just poke. So they just poke and, you just poke and, and then you put the seed in. Exactly. But the thing here is, and the, amaz the amazing part is that that little square, mm -hmm. it has so much uh, organic matter. So you have around 90% of chances that it's going wow. to germinate. Oh my God. That's why the chinampas are so productive. And how many are there? 34,000 total. Oh my God. So imagine if all the 2,000 hectare of chinampas that are now available could mm -hmm. do this. We could very easily feed the whole city. Yeah. I am incredibly inspired by the work that Arca Tierra is doing in Xochimilco and how their vision has the potential to change the way that Mexico City eats in the future. I can't wait to cook along with Dani Moreno, a chef who's passionate about vegetables and cooks on this chinampa often. Let's see what she's got cooking. Hola. So, hi. Hola. This is Dani. Dani, nice Ray. to meet you. Nice to meet you, Rick. Um, what are you making? I'm making tortillas right now oh, okay. for our breakfast. Okay. Do you want to go pick some some plants? Of course. Let's go. Let's go. There's no set menu for our breakfast. We're going to follow the lead of what's in season. Danny had her eyes set on beautiful greens, baby beets, herbs, and gigantic cauliflower. Our game plan, wash the harvest and make a colorful salad with the greens, baby beets, and flowers. I love mandolins. 
Danny whisked up a punchy orange vinaigrette to tie everything together. Oh, this is so gorgeous. Next, we're making huevos en camisados. Danny loves to make these on the farm because cooking the tortillas on an open flame adds a smoky flavor to the dish. Plus, you can cook the tortilla and egg at the same time. We first are gonna make a tortilla. Uh -huh. What I want is for the tortilla to puff. Mm -hmm. So when it puffs, I can open it and then put an egg inside. So I'm gonna remove it. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah, gonna yeah. open it very carefully. Uh -huh. And do you wanna crack the egg yeah. and put it here? There we go. And oh. then some salt and pepper. Okay. And then I'm gonna grab some of this egg white uh -huh. to wow. close it like this. And I'm gonna put it like that. That's so cool. Ah, there it goes. There it goes. Yes! Ready? This isn't that bad. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a bad tortilla holder. No, no, no. S and P. Oh. Do you want to put it on the Kamal? I Maybe. do. See, this is innovation. Yes. Egg right yes. in the tortilla. Don't waste any time. For the salsa to accompany our tortillas, Danny cooked down onion with chiles, then added some black beans. Next, the cauliflower, fresh from the garden, and topped with tomato sauce. Oh my God, I'm so hungry. Are you hungry? Oh yeah. Wow, what a strikingly beautiful plate. Isn't it? I love the color. It's so much color, yeah, and yes. flowers. I'm so excited. Wow. I love the dressing. Thank you. It makes sense that this was grown in really rich soil. Like you can really taste each vegetable. Like they're they're really distinctly flavored. Yeah. Mm. I really? love the flavor of the salsa. I would have oh. never put cauliflower and beans <laughs> and tomate all together in the salsa. And some jalapeno mm -hmm. to spice it up. It's really delicious. And you get that really nice pop of herbs at the mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. This is really incredible. Thank, Thank you, you so all much. so much. Yeah. It's been such an amazing morning. So worth getting up at four yeah, right? o'clock yeah. this morning. <laughs> but it's been beautiful, magical, and now I'm going to eat some amazing food. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you all. All right, so what'd you think? I wouldn't have missed that for the world. Not only just the views and the incredible sunrise coming out, but then like just seeing the dish that you made come together from things that were growing right there. Yeah. And Movie this? magic. <laughs> wow. And we're back. And we're back. <laughs> I think it's nap time and then mezcal. Yeah, no, that sounds good. Okay. I'll see you in a few. Night. Oh. My, oh, my ass is wet, isn't it? That's great. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> One of my absolute favorite ways to cook is straight from the farm. And that's why Xochimilco was so incredible for me. It is also one of the most difficult types of meals to recreate somewhere else because I don't have access to that chinampa. I don't have access to all of that produce. So what I decided to do is create things that were inspiring to me at the Mercado. I used as the base of the menu, the preparation of the eggs inside the tortilla or huevos encamisados or huevos escondidos. And the salsa is going to be a slight riff of what we had along with all the other accoutrements. First, we're gonna break down the cauliflower for a salsa inspired by Danny's on the chinampa. Drizzle with olive oil, sprinkle with salt and pepper, then off it goes to a 450 degree oven for about 25 to 35 minutes. Now we're making the salsa. For the salsa, you'll need to chop a quarter of a large white onion, four large jalapenos, two cloves of garlic. 
Put the chopped veg into a skillet on medium high with three tablespoons of olive oil and cook until just beginning to brown. Now add one pound of chopped ripe tomatoes and a sweet tart tomatillo. Cook until very tender. There were some beautiful green beans at the Mercado today, so I'm gonna add those to my riff on the salsa along with half a cup of water. All the vegetables are in the skillet cooking away for the salsa. So now we're gonna work on the salad. So this salad is going to be very, very different than the salad we had at Xochimilco, mainly because I just don't have access to baby beets and a lot of those flowers I just don't have here. What I do have right now are really beautiful dried beans. So I wanted to celebrate that. I found some really beautiful purslin, some really amazing coconut. So we're gonna have like a coconut bean purslin salad with a little bit of serrano, lime, olive oil, salt, and garlic. It's gonna be really amazing. For a riff on Danny's vinaigrette, whisk together olive oil, fresh lime juice, lime zest, finely grated garlic, and a chili serrano. Add one and a half teaspoons of salt and whisk until combined. This cauliflower is perfectly browned. I'm gonna let it rest until it's time to eat. All right, the very last thing that we need to do and the thing that needs to be made to order are the huevos encamisados. So the first thing we're gonna do is prep the masa. So you can see this masa is a little bit dry and what you need in order to inflate the tortilla is you need moisture on the inside. So basically what's happening is you're cooking the tortilla on two sides, you're sealing the outside and the moisture inside is vaporizing into steam and that's what puffs up the tortilla. If you haven't worked with masa that much, it's hard to know when the masa has enough moisture or not. So what I usually say is you make a ball and then you smash it. If you see these little craggly edges like that, that means that your masa needs more water. So. I just have some water here and I'm gonna go a little bit of it at a time, maybe a couple of tablespoons. Um, and it's just something you really have to practice. There's no set way to do this. And also if your tortillas don't inflate, don't worry about it. Just fry your eggs or poach your eggs and you can set them on top and no one will know. Yes, this feels very, very nice and hydrated. When you are pressing your tortillas, you should have two differing thicknesses of plastic. I'm not exactly sure the mechanics of why. If you use two pieces of plastic that are exactly the same, it makes it harder, but I don't ask questions. I am just going to do what works. And so for me, I like to put the thinner plastic on the bottom. It's easier to take the thicker plastic off first. So, I flattened it ever so slightly. You want about 50 grams of dough, which is slightly smaller than a ping pong ball. I just wanna get it flattened. And then you can see this side is a little thinner, so I'm just gonna flip it 180 and then press it again, just a light tap, and that will even it out. Pull the top plastic off, easy peasy. Now, hot comal. I am using my big, beautiful comal de barro. What you wanna do is cook the tortilla on two sides for about 15 and 30 seconds per side. You'll see tiny little brown marks. That's your cue that it's done. Flip it, cook it another 15 to 30 seconds until it looks like it's dry, then flip it again. That's gonna evaporate the water and the steam is what's gonna give you the puff, but you have to have the two sides completely sealed in order for that to happen. So this is the part where if you have a friend or a little kid, tell them to come on over and give you a hand. Otherwise, I will give you a couple of tips to do this by yourself as I have had practice for the last couple of days. So what you need to do is, or what to me was easiest, is just go ahead and crack your eggs into little bowls. And that way you can hold the tortilla with one hand and then pour the egg in with the other. And we're going to salt and let's pepper them too, directly into the bowl. And then I'm going to take my puffed tortillas. 
you wanna take your very sharp knife, you wanna insert it right here where it's like sort of thin and puffy. And then just make a small, maybe like a three inch little slash. Just use your hand to kind of open the hole and then take the bowl and pour in the egg. And then take your finger and then just kind of rub the egg white over the gap, press it down, and then just put it on the hot kumai. Everything is ready, so it is time to plate. And more importantly, it's time to eat. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna plate is the bean salad. Letting the beans ever so slightly dry out on the surface. The dried surface will then absorb all of this deliciousness and it will make them shine and shimmer like little jewels. I'm gonna take my beautiful porcelain. We've got some beautiful fresh coconut, which I'm just going to shave over the top. Take a little cotija and just crumble it over the top. Some scallion. And then you got like this dressing with a little bit of the bean juice in it and then just pour this over the top. And that is a beautiful bean salad. really bright, really tropical. That hit of coconut, the saltiness of the cotija, that really gentle warming of the serrano. It just screams summertime tropical vibes. All right, going in for this guy. That is a ridiculous bite, but things I do for my job. Mm. It's definitely screaming brunch vibes, kind of sort of like Eggs Benedict, only Super, 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 super delicious. This looks nothing like what I ate at Xochimilco. And that's totally fine because I got to forage around Mazatlan looking for things that were fresh, that inspired me, that spoke to me at that moment. And I made this amazing meal. And that's what you should do. Go to your farmer's market, go to your local grocery store, talk to your farmers, talk to the growers, find out what's in season and make that. Use the recipe as a guide, but sub in the things that you love, the things that look great, and you are going to absolutely love this dish. Mm. 